In this video, we will discuss two classical examples of inborn errors of metabolism, phenylketonuria and alkaptonuria. Both are rare genetic disorders caused by enzyme deficiencies, leading to accumulation of specific metabolites in the body. We will examine their biochemical bases, pathways and physiological processes. Now let's start with the phenylketonuria first, which is a metabolic disorder. It's due to inborn error in metabolism, where body is unable to break down amino acid phenylalanine, which leads to accumulation of phenylalanine in blood. And these elevated abnormal levels of phenylalanine in blood targets the brain and damages it. Now, first of all, let's see the normal mechanism in detail. Here we have a phenylalanine amino acid in presence of oxygen, NADH and tetrahydrobiopterin. It's acted upon by phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme and converts this phenylalanine into tyrosine. Along with that, we get water and NAD+. In the next step, this tyrosine molecule is acted upon by tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme in presence of tetrahydrobiopterin and oxygen and converts this tyrosine into DOPA. Then this DOPA is acted upon by DOPA decarboxylase enzyme and we get the dopamine shown in the diagram. Now on this dopamine, the DOPA beta hydroxylase acts and converts it into norepinephrine. And in the last step, we see phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase enzyme acts on norepinephrine in presence of s adenosyl methionine and converts it into epinephrine. So we see this is the basic normal metabolism of phenylalanine amino acid. But when we have the PAH gene mutation, that time phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme ceases to exist, which means phenylalanine will not be converted to tyrosine and we will be devoid of any further reactions. So we can say there will be absence of tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine or epinephrine. So all the enzymes ceases to exist here. And the final outcome of this mutation is accumulation of phenylalanine. That means phenylalanine levels shoot up in the blood and dopamine, epinephrine and norepinephrine comes down. First we see the elevated levels of phenylalanine leads to accumulation and this phenylalanine is also converted to phenylketones which is harmful for brain when levels are high. All these factors that is phenylalanine up and other hormones levels down can adversely affect the brain which ultimately leads to abnormal development of brain. Here we can see the elevated levels of phenylalanine in blood. This phenylalanine can cross blood brain barrier since it's able to utilize the L-type amino acid transporter that's LAT1 which other amino acids also use like leucine, glutamine. So when we have the elevated levels of phenylalanine in blood, it competes with other amino acids to cross the blood-brain barrier. And with this, we get the increased levels of phenylalanine in brain, which damages the brain eventually. Now let's see how PA gene mutation occurs. The PA gene is located on long arm of chromosome number 12 at 12q23.2. It has 13 exons and 12 introns, which encodes monomer of 452 amino acids. Now talking about the mutation of PA gene, it has got diversity of mutations of which one is R413P mutation, which includes G to C transition. Here we have a normal sequence CGC at 413 position, running from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This CGC codes for arginine. Now in case of mutation, G is getting replaced by C and we get the CCC, which then codes for proline, thereby changing the whole sequence here. That leads to mutation. Now moving towards the genetics of phenylketonuria. On the left we have unaffected carrier father with capital R and small r alleles. And on the right, we have an unaffected carrier mother with capital R and small r alleles. Here in this diagram, these formers are the separate alleles. 
Now upon cross we get the capital R, capital R individual. Second is capital R, small r individual. Third one is capital R, small r. And fourth one is small r, small r. The first one is homozygous dominant. Second and third one are heterozygous dominant. And fourth one is homozygous recessive. So we see the first one is unaffected. Second and third ones are carriers like their parents. And fourth one is affected since both the alleles are recessive in nature. So this is the whole genetics of phenylketonuria along with the phenylketonuria metabolism. Now moving towards alkaptonuria which is also an inborn error in protein metabolism caused by mutation in HGD gene located at 3q21-23. This HGD gene drives the synthesis of enzyme homogentisate 1-2 dioxygenase enzyme which is crucial for protein metabolism. We see this enzyme acts on HGA that's homogentisic acid and converts it into MAA that's malyl estoastic acid. But when we have the mutation in HGD gene that time we are not making this enzyme. And homogentisic acid is not getting converted into malyl estoastic acid. That ultimately leads to accumulation of HGA within the body. Which proves to be fatal in many ways which we are going to see later on in this video. We also see this condition shows autosomal recessive pattern. Now let's see the alkaptonuria metabolic pathway. It starts with phenylalanine amino acid, which is acted upon by phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme and gets converted to tyrosine. If this enzyme that's phenylalanine hydroxylase is missing, that condition leads to PKU that's phenylketonuria which we have already discussed. Then this tyrosine is acted upon by tyrosine aminotransferase enzyme and we get the 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvic acid. And if this aminotransferase enzyme is missing, that condition is termed as tyrosinemia type 2. In the next step, 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvic acid is acted upon by 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvic acid dioxygenase enzyme and converts it into homogentisic acid. If this 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvic acid dioxygenase enzyme is missing, that leads to tyrosinemia type 3. Now we see this homogentisic acid is acted upon by homogentisate 1-2 dioxygenase enzyme and converts it into 4-malyl estoastic acid. And if this HGD enzyme is missing, that condition is termed as alkaptonuria. Now let's keep this condition as such. Further let's say all the enzymes are working properly. So from here that's 4 malyl estoastic acid is converted to 4 fumaryl estoastic acid by the action of isomerase enzyme. And then this is further converted to fumaric acid and estoastic acid by the action of hydrolase enzyme. And we also see the branching of this pathway that's 4 malyl estoastic acid plus 4 fumaryl estoastic acid gives us succinyl estoastic acid. And later this is converted to succinyl acetone. So this is the whole metabolism of phenylalanine amino acid. And within these reactions we are going to see how the alkaptonuria occurs. The blockage is here. The HGD gene is missing and we do not get the further reactions. So the pathway ceases from here. But when we get the accumulation of homogentisic acid, it is acted upon by HGA polyphenol oxidase enzyme. And this is kind of an auto-oxidation reaction. And this homogentisic acid is converted into benzoquinone acetate. Now from here, the polymerization starts. We see the benzoquinone acetate is polymerized into alkaptone, which is an ochronotic pigment. We see this alkaptone is dark pigment from which the alkaptonuria gets its name. The alkaptone is deposited into ear cartilage, ocular tissues and in collagen. The deposition of this alkaptone in the various tissues is termed as ochronosis. And then we move on to the symptoms. First of all the urine becomes black when exposed to air shown in the diagram. And we see the ochronosis of certain tissues like black spots in the sclera of eye shown in the diagram. We see the discolored ear and dark ear wax and blue-black specular discoloration of skin 
then there is osteoarthritis of spine hips shoulders and knees and finally we see the kidney prostate and bladder stones due to hga accumulation now let's see its diagnosis the first important traditional test is that we keep the urine standing and if the urine turns black or dark it's positive for alkaptonuria second is the perichloride test if the perichloride is added to the urine it will turn the urine black in the people with this condition third one is skin test we see a skin biopsy can be used to diagnose alkaptonuria by revealing yellow with brown pigmented bodies in the dermis we see in this picture the banana shaped yellow brown deposits in the dermis are a classical histological finding in the skin of alkaptonuria also known as endogenous ochronosis fourth one is gas chromatography mass spectrometry that is gcms analysis is the gold standard test for alkaptonuria by detecting the amount of homogeneic acid in 24 hour urine sample and last one is the dna testing to check for mutated hgd gene so this is what alkaptonuria is and its metabolism i hope you like the video if you like it give it a thumbs up do consider supporting my work on patreon or youtube and make sure to subscribe to the channel thanks